three, two, one. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, the Lo-Fi Horror Guy. Today, we're going to dig into anthology horror movies. Along with monster movies, anthology horror movies are my favorite subgenre. Uh, so, without further ado, we are going to start this off and kick it off with 1982's Creepshow, uh, directed by George A. Romero. Stephen King did the screenplay for this bad boy. Very cool stories. Um, you know, it stars Leslie Nielsen, it stars Ted Danson, it stars Ed Harris, and my favorite of all starring in this film is the one and only Stephen King in The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verl. Uh, in this story, you see a Jordy Verl who is very down on himself, very down on his luck, goes, has a comet crash in the backyard of his, of his house, um, uh, puts his hand in it, you know, kind of trying to see what's going on with it, uh, winds up this, this mossy type substance that grows and spreads absolutely everywhere. Um, Jordy Verl, uh, very much a lunkhead in this, uh, but a very lovable character, even though it's not a very long sequence by any means. Uh, he is definitely an awesome portrayal of the character in this uh with his crossed eyes and all uh you feel like you have seen a 30-hour documentary on the guy for how bad you feel for him in the end of it uh but nonetheless very silly uh story but very good i love the lonesome death of Jordy Verl. that's gonna be my first mention creep show uh to go with my second mention is going to be a 1993s directed by John Carpenter and Toby Hooper, as well as a uncredited uh, Larry Sulkis. We're going with Body Bags. This is my artisan edition that I bought off of a family video some years ago. They just had it sitting there uh, collecting dust. Very cool. All right, on the disc, it comes with a slip sleeve here with old boy uh, uh, and his hair sequence. Uh, but I am going to mention... Uh, my favorite sequence of this was the gas station, which I believe is the open, opening sequence. Um, the gas station is uh, basically Robert Carradine is an employee there training a new uh, new employee who's just coming on, I believe, like her first night, if not her first week or something. Um, working third shift at a gas station, ultimately ends up terrorized by a serial killer uh, throughout it. Very good, though. It kind of reminded me of like a Dawn of the Dead type trapped, like a dog soldiers, I guess. There's other movies, too, but trapped in a in a uh, in a uh, single area. Um, and, you know, the movie doesn't really venture off from that. But I absolutely loved it. I thought it was very cool. Body Bags in general has tons of uh People that featured in this, uh, you can go Tom Arnold, you can go John Carpenter and Toby Hooper, both had features in this. Robert Carradine was uh, one of the main acts. Mark Hamill played a baseball player losing his eye, obviously, from Star Wars. Um, Wes Craven makes a, an appearance. Sam Raimi makes an appearance. Stacy Keach is in the, the hair sequence. Um, Greg Nicotero, who is a... Uh, uh, absolute legend in the makeup community, um, special effects community, makes an appearance, and Roger Corman as well, uh, who is responsible for all sorts of terrible, uh, treacherous monsters in the movie business. Uh, Body Bags is going to be my number two mention. Very cool movie. Pick it up. I'm sure the Blu-ray transfer is amazing. I just have been a little lazy on getting that. Um, number three that I'm going to mention is going to be a Another collection of Stephen King uh, stories made into a film. Uh, we are going with 1985's Cat's Eyes, uh, or Cat's Eye. Louis Teague is the director who also did Cujo and Alligator. Um, and basically, the uh, sequence that I wanted to go over was one that stars James Woods, um, called Quitters Inc., which basically he's so desperate to quit smoking that he goes and gets a membership to this club called Quitters Inc., which they will go and stop at no ends as far as making you quit smoking. One of my favorite sequences is when uh, he's sitting there and he's kind of hiding in this in this closet there and he's trying to light up a, a, a smoke and he's going and he looks down and all of a sudden he sees this 
person's feet, like shoes and pants and, you know, and, and, and legs, obviously uh, a, a, a person standing in there spying on him. Um, they will go at no end to make sure that he stops, uh, that he stops smoking. Uh, very cool story. I absolutely loved it. I've never read, uh, the, the book of it, but I definitely need to, uh, I love Stephen King, as I mentioned in the last video there. Um, but it also features a young, uh, Drew Barrymore, uh, Robert Hayes is in a sequence where he's at the 30th floor of a building and is in such debt from gambling that he has to go and make a tour around it, um, which is also terrifying because I hate heights. Uh, so without further ado, Cat's Eye is going to be our number three mention. Number four, we are going to go with a uh, Chiller's. Daniel Boyd, 1987. This is a trauma release. Um, not anything worth looking at. You know, honestly, uh, the disc is okay. I believe it was one of these uh, Toxies Triple Terror releases a while back where I'm, I'm assuming that trauma just bought like tons of C-class movies, uh, the rights to them and released them as three packs and hope that somebody you know, some sucker would come along and buy them like myself. Uh, but this movie was actually really sweet. Chillers um, is about this mix of people that are at a, uh, at, that are at a bus station waiting and they come across, you know, all saying that, hey, we, we all had really weird dreams last night. And what was yours about? What was yours about? What was yours about? Uh, the second sequence that I wanted to talk about was a story where, um, a Boy Scout leader and three Boy Scouts go out and they're trying to scout out this new uh, area for them to go and have a, uh, a site for like this annual uh, fall camp out type deal. And they go out and uh, pretty much ultimately the, uh, the, the Boy Scout leader winds up to be a complete psychopath and just goes on this rampage on these kids. Um, it's really, really, you know, kind of a different take, but it was a good story and a good movie and something I don't really see a whole lot of people talk about. Um, obviously not the best quality, but all of its campfirey uh, cheesiness, chillers, and that story specifically is a good one. Um, there's also another one in the beginning. I think the first sequence is like a haunted pool. Um, where they're swimming and somebody has died and people keep seeing a ghost and that one's pretty cool too actually um, so for number four that is chillers and uh, on to our last mention we are going to go and speak about brian peck's the willies 1990 um brian peck I don't think any ever made anything else necessarily, but he did star in Return of the Living Dead as Scuzz. Um, and then he was also in the second and third Return of the Living Dead as like extras or whatever. Um, but basically, this stars Sean Astin, James Karen. Uh, it's got Kathleen Freeman. All of the stories are sweet. All of the stories are banging. <laughs> Mucho de I love them all. Um, I guess first and foremost, it starts out with a, uh, a, a young boy who's in elementary school who sees a monster in the bathroom. Nobody believes him until it is too late. Uh, and that's all I can say about that. It's absolutely great. I loved it. it and it, not to give away too much, but that is the monster. If that gives you anything. Uh, let's see. Doesn't want to focus. Doesn't want to focus. Either way, that's the monster. Um, that's the first story. The second story is an older fellow that goes on a, uh, uh, a scare house type, type ride, like a haunted house type thing, and is looking for something that's just going to absolutely be terrifying, just a scared to death type feeling. Um, that story is very cool too. The third story is the story of the fat bastard, Gordy Belcher. Um, <laughs> and obviously, uh, I, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that uh, at one point that's quoted in the movie, and it was kind of a funny part. <laughs> but the poor fella gets uh, bullied, you know, pretty much all throughout the movie, and then finally he winds up getting sick of it, and he says, "You know what? I'm I'm going to give them a taste of their own medicine, and I'm I'm going to be mean for once." And uh, basically, the moral of the story there is that you do not lower yourself to the standards of 
your enemies that are already low. You don't lower yourself to that person. Um, and he finds that out very quickly. Uh, the, the story of Gordy Belcher is awesome, though. I absolutely love that one as well. Um, this whole movie in general, The Willies, is sweet. I uh, could not say enough about that movie, too. If you, if you find a copy, if you have anything, a uh, local movie company or anything like that, that might have it, uh, uh, a CD, DVD, uh, FYE, something like that, check it out. Very cool. Um, movies that I did not mention that, uh, you know, obviously given a shout out to is like Creepshow 2, um, which is another favorite of mine, but I've already spoken about um, popular as well. Uh, Tales from the Crypt, obviously. Tales from the Dark Side, obviously. obviously. Tales from the Hood, obviously. Those movies, uh, they just released a second one, I think, of that to Netflix. I don't know if that did all that well. I haven't seen it. Um, Trilogy of Terror, of course. Uh, VHS for something a little bit newer. The ABCs of Death Part 2. The first one was a little too much. I don't think I would ever watch that again. Um, it wasn't terrible, but the ABC Death, ABCs of Death 2 uh, definitely had some cool sequences. Uh, Black Sabbath, if we're going to throw it back, you know, back in the day. Um, I think that was like 54. Don't quote me. That's probably wrong. But um, yeah, Black Sabbath was very cool. Another one to mention that's currently on Hulu uh, is Ghost Stories. I just watched that a couple of nights ago, and I'm going to watch it again to kind of get even more of a feeling of it but there was definitely some creepy points in that movie um three extremes was another one uh that had some definitely very creepy moments uh takishi mike or takishi miyaki and I don't, i'm not sure I'm probably pronouncing that wrong uh definitely kills his sequence in that movie which is box um so without further of dude that was my anthology series movies a um, couple of my favorites a couple of ones that i haven't heard so much talked about uh bringing some light onto some classics as well if you have any uh suggestions go ahead and send them in the uh, comments below send me a message check out my instagram with the same name the lo-fi horror guy uh, if you have any uh, suggestions of future videos that you would like to see, also let me know. Absolutely. Um, today's honorable record is the Acacia Strains Continent. This is their, I believe it was their fourth record. Um, but to say they're more popularized, it would be their, their second record. Um, the first two were good, but I think uh, they really started blowing up after the Dead Walk. Honorable songs on this uh, tracks, uh, obviously, are C Word, which is the second track. Very fast, very pummeling. Dr. Doom, which is the same way. Um, very fast-paced, uh, just in-your-face uh, beat down of a track and then Cthulhu is another love of mine um, the Acacia Strain the Acacia Strain uh, Continent check it out if you have not and without further ado I'm the lo-fi horror guy go ahead and give me a ding give me a dong give me a bing give me a bong give me a like give me a share if you don't I do not care uh, you know at the end of the day I'm just trying to share some nice anthology scares Bam, that all rhymed, that all worked out. We are out of here. This is your doggy, the lo-fi horror guy, and I'm going to hit you with the old three, two, one.